Welcome to my DIY channel and in this video I'm going to change the spark plugs of a Honda 3.5 liter VTEC engine and I have a 2010 Honda Odyssey with a V6 and uh, this one takes the uh, NGK laser iridium spark plug which is actually which came with the engine so I'm going to replace it with the uh, same spark plugs and I just bought this from from Rock Auto, the spark plug number is 3657. They run about uh, eight to nine dollars a piece. And I have six spark plugs here. Now, if you have a different uh, model of this uh, car and you might have a 3.5 liter IVTEC, in this case, the spark plugs will be a little different this has um, a different uh, diameter of the uh, of the spark plug itself uh, on the cylinders so check the correct spark plug that applies to your car and especially the ones i'm talking about is the ones that have the variable cylinder management system and instead of the 3.5 vtec it will say 3.5 iv tech tools i will be using is a ratchet and in this case i have a ratchet which uh, flexes a little bit you can also use some of the the flex heads if you have and a couple of extension that i have and also in my case the uh, i need a hex plug or a hex socket in this case or you can if you have a hex bed that should be fine too in my case this is a 7 by 32 hex socket but if you don't have a hex socket you should go and grab one before you can take it off in many of the other models I've seen where you don't have need a hex bit but it just uh, needs a regular socket. So the first thing you want to do is pop these pop these connectors so you can press on the top here on this on the side of the connector and it will pop out. Next is the socket I mentioned it's a hex bit that you need to put in here and you can see it it only goes inside some of the models and if you look at it you probably will be able to figure out has the socket where you can put a regular socket on top of it in my case it takes a hex bit next I put a ratchet in here and with a small extension and you can see that I have already loosened this up and here is the bolt that came off and what you do is you pop this out And this is the uh, connector, so just make sure there is no cracks or damage to these connectors. They look good, so I'm going to put this back. If you see that there is damage, you should replace this. So what I have is the 5x8 socket on a longer extension. And the way you do it is you put the extension in and you will have enough clearance for this one and you put this in and make sure that it is holding the the spark plug and then i'm going to put this ratchet onto the extension and then you should be able to open this up so i have loosened it and once you have loosened it you can use your fingers and make sure you don't uh, damage it doesn't matter since you are replacing these but when you put it in always start to use your fingers more than you use your ratchet here is the first spark plug that i pulled out and it looks pretty good this is the new one i have and the numbers exactly match the one i'm going to put in it's also ngk laser iridium i'm going to put some anti-seize for that i have a permatex anti-seize lubricant and what i'm going to do is take a little bit of anti-seize and apply a tiny bit of anti-seize onto the threads of this and I'm going to use the same anti-seize to just run over on the other spark plug. So you can see there is a little coating of anti-seize in there. 
and that should do it. One thing is you should never try to regap these. These came gapped from the factory and you should just leave it as it is. One thing to remember is when you are putting the spark plug back in, you want to remove this rubber gasket in there because what happens is once you put the spark plug and tighten it, this gasket will stay with the spark plug and it's very difficult to remove it. I'm going to put the first one in. Just make sure that there is this washer in there and I will just drop this in slowly over here and then this can go in. You want to start to hand tighten it. And you want to only use the the uh, wrench at the end after it is tightened. And finally you need a little torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, it takes uh, 11 pound feet of torque. But if you don't have it, it's fine. Just uh, hand tighten it and use a little bit of tightening with your wrench. So I'm going to use my torque wrench for the uh, tightening. It takes very little. You don't want to. And as you can see, I'm holding the base so that it You can see it's it's very very less amount of torque that you need I'm going to put the boot back in and it's good to put some uh, dielectric grease uh, grease on there and uh, that will help uh, with any moisture repelling uh, and not getting in there but uh, I just cleaned it up and this goes in Just make sure it uh, clamps down there. The plug will go back in and you should hear a click. There you go. The first one is done. Second one going in. The third one you can you can squeeze this in through. It's not that difficult to, to use a long socket here. Once tightened, I will just put the plugs back in and always listen for the click. Now that you have done the first three, which is the easier one, you can see and, uh, and do it easily. Now the rear ones, you probably can't see much. So you have to do it by feel. I'm going to take the camera in just to show you where they are. So you can see this is one right there. You can see the number five and there is number six, which is a little bit hidden there. And that's the fourth one.
if you need to, you can always take your camera in and I can see through my camera. So that's the fifth one. And there is the sixth one there. And remember that the tabs are now towards the passenger side. So that's the sixth one. Now this is where an angle socket will help. So I'm going to be able to bend this this wrench and also I have an extension where I can pull it out and in this case I will just go and feel it where it is those bolts are not very uh, very tight and you shouldn't also make them leave too tight it's very pretty much finger tight a little bit after finger tight just make sure that the bolts don't fall in the back otherwise you have to go searching for it I'm going to do one at a time because I don't want to leave the uh, the hole to the piston open so there comes the first one and it looks to be fine and see any cracks That's the fourth spark plug. Going to put the clip in. This looks good as well. Now the last one is a little tricky. There is the clearance is less. Looks pretty good. Now the tricky part of this one is I will put the socket in first and then I'm going to lower the the extension And then my ratchet goes in. Be careful of the hose in the back. You don't want to damage the hose.
There it goes. And I will, uh, and I always put a, a finger so that it's going in the center and it doesn't, whenever you are loosening or tightening, it doesn't damage the spark plug. So here is the sixth plug, and if you have a, and a VCM engine, which is the uh, 3.5 liter iTech, and you might have fouling in the sixth plug, so you may want to look at uh, whether there is a lot of dark darkness on this area. These plugs actually look really good for the age it's 11 years, 100,000 miles. The tips still look good. There is no degradation in the tip. The new plug, I put some anti-seize. taken the rubber uh, boot in so the rubber boot taken out the rubber boot out I'm going to hand tighten it until it's all snug Getting it out is a little tricky, but you can you can squeeze it, and so this needs to come out. And the screw. And then the plug goes in. Don't forget to put the plug in. I'm going to start the engine. And that started fine. Doesn't look like there is any error code. You can see I have the A14. I already uh, changed the timing belt. You will see another video. Uh, and I just replaced the spark plugs. So the tire rotations have been done. The oil change, I will wait till the oil life goes to zero. So it now has 999, 43 miles, 99,943 miles. The engine is running fine. And uh, though the spark plugs were still good, I could have left it for another uh, 20,000 miles or so, but it's good to go with the maintenance uh, reminders that uh, the car is giving me. And since this is a car we owned from being from new, we had it for 11 years, almost 100,000 miles. Hope this helps. Uh, if you have any uh, comments, comment on the uh, video and I will try to respond. Also, if you can, uh, Subscribe to my channel, you will find other videos on the 2010 Honda Odyssey and similar uh, engine. As well as, if this was helpful, click on the like button. That helps uh, uh, improve my uh, channel and the uh, videos that I put, put out.